Hello everybody, I want to talk to you guys about a new topic. A topic that I have sunk a lot of time and money into in the last month, and that's strategy guides. Obviously you knew that if you clicked onto this video, but I want to talk to you about strategy guides. Why I bought them, why I'm spending time into them, and why I think they're important to the gaming culture, history, just gaming in general. Why strategy guides are so important. All right, first off, why I've been buying them? Well, they're a time saver. They're a 100% time saving product, all right? I'm a dad gamer. And what that means to me is I'm a dad first, gamer second. So I don't have a ton of time to sit down and get lost into a video game and just figure it out. If I have time to play a game, it's when my kids are asleep or they're not with me and I'm not at work. I don't have all that much time to play games, so a strategy guide is a great resource for me to use to get through a more difficult part. Like say, if I played Ocarina of Time for the first time, I think that game would have taken me a year to figure out, if not longer, to know where to get the fire arrows. I would have never have thought of that. Like, there's no way. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but it's not something you would think about doing. Other things we can save time with on strategy game games is 100 percent in a game if i'm not a completionist not even close not even a thought of being a completionist i i leave bananas and coins all the time that doesn't bother me but if you're a completionist you're probably going to need a strategy guide if you want to save a little bit of time and another way we can use strategy guys is we can just learn how to play the game right you can use the strategy the you can use a strategy guide in the beginning and learn how the game works. We don't need to bump our head against our uh, table or the wall trying to figure out games when we have a strategy guide. We, it could very much help us get through whatever it is we're dealing with. Let's take, for instance, Donkey Kong 64. It's a little difficult to understand and know that you need to use the different characters at different times for different objectives. You might not have known that. You might have saw a different colored banana and thought, why can't I get this? And you could have wasted your time. Whereas if you had just read the strategy guide or I guess the manual, you could have gotten through that part a lot easier without bumping your head against the table. And then this leads me into my next part, frustration. How many times have you played a game and you didn't know where to go next? You missed a a key point that you just weren't paying attention to and you spent hours wandering around looking for where to go i've spent so many times doing that and it's to a point where i will put my controller down turn off my console and i will not go back to that game and i miss out on so much of the story and so much of everything and, and all the time i had spent to get to that point is now gone i wouldn't say wasted because i'm sure i enjoyed the game up to that point but what I'm saying is, if we have a strategy guide to tell us where we need to go next, that strategy guide can greatly help our progress forward and alleviate a ton of headache and time taken away from playing the game. And another version of frustration, instead of getting lost, can be just, how do I get past this part? Remember I was playing uh, Prince of Persia, Sands of Times, and there's a part that's teaching you how to play where you have to jump back and forth up walls. Well, I kept falling down. I couldn't figure out how to get up. Eventually, I figured out you have to hold the trigger to jump on the wall. Well, the instructions weren't telling me that, whereas a manual or a, a strategy guide would have helped me get up that wall quicker and I wouldn't have been so frustrated with that particular part. So to alleviate frustration, not only can strategy guides help us on where to go next and find the next clue or whatever we need to do next in the game, but also it can help us get past those pretty difficult parts that might be a difficulty spike. If, if the game has a spike in difficulty, the strategy guide can help us get through it. All right, this brings me to my next point, collectivity. Strategy guides are becoming expensive. Strategy guides are becoming expensive and harder to find, and even more so, they aren't being made anymore. But the, is the value of this strategy guide going to increase, or is it going to decrease? I just spent $20 on a Link to the Past strategy guide, and in my mind, that's worth it. Now, now I have a piece of history that I'm going to be able to own for the rest of my life. 
The collectivity of strategy guides. Is it worth it? I believe the history in itself in the strategy guide and where they began and where they are now is enough for me to start collecting these things and, and passing them on. Um, if not just for myself to enjoy and look at and think about my childhood and get nostalgic about it, but also for my kids to see in, in the future and my grandkids to see. That's a little extreme that my grandkids are going to be looking at video game strategy guides, but it might be a cool little blast of the past in about 40, 50 years from now. And then also we can think about a few different things like a guide or an art book. I have, I have a few of these strategy guides that can almost be art books. The Gears of War 3 strategy guide, it's a hardcover and it basically is an art book. And it's, it's really neat to see the different things that the creators and the developers of Gears of War went through developing the artwork and whatnot. And it's all illustrated and shown right here in this, in this hardcover book that now I'm gonna have forever. Thank you, Dave, for sending me this. But it also shows that guides can be a work of art in themselves. But then we also have different types of strategy guides. We have different companies creating these strategy guides, or at least we did. We had the Nintendo Power, and we had the Premiera. So the Nintendo Power was the first party company from Nintendo that had the Nintendo Power magazine that would come out and make these strategy guides. Well, Nintendo didn't publish every game. So Prima is another company that I have many of these strategy guides. Uh, they're developed by another company, but they are officially licensed strategy guides from said company. Like if you look here, the Half-Life strategy guide, which it's a really cool one because not only does it give you the strategy guide, the strategy tips and tricks of the single player game, but it also kind of helps you into the multiplayer game, showing you the map layouts and gives you a little bit of that edge in the Half-Life multiplayer now oh, it's probably just counter-strike and that book is so outdated you're gonna get squished either way now with the history and the value of strategy guides this brings me to my next issue or thought process here if you come across a sealed strategy guide do you keep that thing sealed is it okay to open that strategy guide you see i have two right here i have legend of zelda twilight princess also, I have Donkey Kong Country Returns. Both these strategy guys are sealed. Got the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess from Dave. Bought him a t-shirt. He sent me two awesome books. But I was on uh, perusing eBay, as I do, and I found this one, uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns, uh, for $15 sealed. Blew my mind. I, I, I don't know why it was still sealed. I, I didn't get a, a history on this one. However, I... I'm having trouble opening it. I haven't gotten too deep into Donkey Kong Returns. However, I have the guide and if I get stuck, I'm probably going to open it, but I'm going to hesitate to open this. Now also there are other strategy guides that are insanely expensive. Everybody's heard of Earthbound. Well, I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people have heard of Earthbound and they know how expensive that game cartridge in and of itself. About 300, 350 just for Earthbound the cartridge. Now you're spending close to that just looking for the strategy guide that came with the game. So there is a lot of value in these strategy guides when they're hard to find. And I, I believe the value is only going to increase over time. And more and more of these guys are lost to the trash or getting destroyed people not taking care of them i think this part of history gaming history is on its way out and i i'm going to try to preserve as much of it as i can but why why are strategy guys on the way out well plain and simply the internet anybody can make a video of a walkthrough of them playing the game label different chapters within the comment section telling you like time market and then now you got to walk through the game so it's so easy for us to get stuck in a game, pull up Google, Google search, whatever the issue is, and we can find it in minutes. And you didn't spend a dime. You didn't go looking for the strategy guide, buy the strategy guide, wait for the strategy guide to come in the mail. You went on Google, you typed in what you needed, and you moved on. I'm guilty of doing this myself. All right, but then that brings us into the thought of physical versus digital. So 
I'm a guy who, even in high school, I always wanted to see a physical version of what I was reading so I can take a note, uh, underline it, something, something. When I have it on a computer and in front of me, like a computer monitor, I have a harder time following along. Now, if it's a YouTube video, it's basically a bunch of pictures being flashed at me, and that's easy, whatever. But I think there's something about physically holding the book, owning that book, Right, Nintendo can go on YouTube and rip down all of those different YouTube videos, like what Nintendo likes to do. Right, they like to take down things that have anything to do with their property. However, Nintendo cannot come into my house and pull these books off my shelf and take them away from me. These books are forever mine. We can get into the physical digital debate later, but when it comes to guides, I would much rather have a physical version of a guide than a digital version of a guide. And that brings me to my final point too. Uh, is it okay to print guides off the internet? For Ocarina of Time, I didn't wanna spend, okay, I didn't wanna tell my wife that I was gonna spend about $40 on a Ocarina of Time walkthrough guide. I don't think she would have been okay with that. So I printed it out. I downloaded a PDF file that I found for Ocarina of Time, the 3DS version, printed it out, put it in a three-ring binder, and that's how I did it. I it had a black and white pictures, and I, I had the guide in front of me, but I had it printed out. So is it ethically, morally okay to print out guides if you find them online? You're printing a PDF file. Somebody put it online. I don't know, I did it for the one. Uh, since then, I haven't done it but it's something you can do. So it is a digital piece of media that you can turn into a physical piece of media if you have the printer, the ink, and the paper to do so. My wife would say I wasted a lot of paper and ink, but you know, that's all right. So also, is a strategy guide cheating? Nah, but it makes it a lot easier.